Welcome to Three Steps to Sketch. In this video, we are going to dig into the method for graphing basic unshifted cosecant graphs by looking at the most basic example, which is y equals cosecant x. And this should give us a much better idea how to work with the template and uh, put all the pieces into place. So here's our template. And here's a grid for our equation. Notice first that our equation is in the general form for an unshifted cosecant equation. So y equals a cosecant bx. And so that's why we know we can use this basic cosecant graphs method. So let's jump in. Step one is to find the companion equation and its essential info along with the asymptotes for the graph. So our companion equation is going to be the reciprocal. Um, so if we have y equals one cosecant one x, all you have to do is replace cosecant with sine and that's the companion equation. So we have y equals sine x. With this method, we're essentially going to graph the companion equation and then use it to get the reciprocal graph that we want. Um, and this is a pretty basic example because you probably know what the graph of y equals sine x looks like and could graph it very quickly. But we're going to go through the method just to help you fur further understand and better understand the method so you can use it for any unshifted cosecant equation. So let's get some information about the base graph. We see that the coefficient, the leading coefficient a is one. So that tells us that the amplitude of our sine companion graph will be one. Remember that's distance from midline to max or midline to min. B, the coefficient of x is also one. So we know we should have one cycle happening between zero and two pi. And we can also use that to find the period. Period's always two pi divided by b for sine graphs and cosecant graphs. So our period is simply two pi here. And remember period is the length of a horizontal cycle. Um, so we've got that, now let's decide on some scale labels. Um, we do choose our horizontal scale label very intentionally so that when we plot our companion pattern in the next step, all the points align nicely with our horizontal tick marks. Um, to get that to happen, all you need to do is take the period and divide by four. So two pi divided by four is pi over two, and that's how we'll count uh, to label our horizontal axis. For our vertical axis, we'll use one. So let's take a moment and go ahead and label our axes. So horizontally, we count one pi over two, two pi over two reduces to pi, three pi over two, four pi over two reduces to two pi, and five pi over two. So I'll pause and get the negative side of this axis labeled, same values, just negative. Okay, so it looks like this. And now we can label our vertical axis, counting by ones. So one, two, three, negative one, negative two, negative three. And now we've got a really nice setup for step two. So we're going to put a hold on our companion for just a second, and let's go ahead and find the asymptotes equation for cosecant. I like to do this at the beginning because it gives me another reference point when finishing up my graph to double check, make sure all the information is consistent working together. Um, it helps me feel very confident that I have a correct graph at the end. So vertical asymptotes of cosecant happen where the original zeros of the sine companion happen. So this is a great example here. Um, the zeros or x-intercepts of sine become the vertical asymptotes of cosecant. And there's a really nice way to find the asymptotes equation for any cosecant graph. Um, it'll be very basic for this example, but it'll work really, really well for some more advanced examples. Um, and I'll be sure to post some of those, and I'll probably post some asymptotes specific videos as well, um, just to help a little bit more with that. Anyway, so what you want to do is take your inputs of your cosecant function and set them equal to the zeros of sine. So that's at zero plus pi k. And we would usually do a little scratch work here, but since our input is just x, we're going to say our asymptotes happen where x equals zero plus pi k. A quick note, if you'd had anything with the x, all you'd have to do is solve for x and you'd have your asymptotes equation for whatever cosecant you were working with. Uh, another note, k is an integer here. And so what that means is substitute in different values for k and that'll tell you where each asymptote is along your cosecant graph. 
For example, if k is 0, you should have an asymptote at x equals 0. If k is 1, simplify 0 plus pi, you should have 1 at pi. Uh, if k is negative 1, you should have another asymptote at negative pi. Um, so this is just a really nice way to efficiently represent all of the asymptotes of our graph. Now we're ready to move on to step two. Let's plot our companion pattern. Um, so we did all of the analysis in step one, and all we need now is to remember what a sign pattern looks like. So an unreflected sign pattern is first zero, maximum, second zero, minimum. And remember zero is just another way to say x-intercept. So let's lightly plot this companion pattern because we'll use this to create the reciprocal in the next step. So for unshifted sign, we start at the origin, zero. Our maximum happens at the first horizontal tick mark and the value for the y coordinate will be a. Okay, remember that a gave us our amplitude. Okay, another zero at the next horizontal tick mark. A minimum happens at the third horizontal tick mark. Y coordinate comes from the opposite value a, so negative one. And then we would repeat. So here you see we have one cycle of our companion sine graph. So just doing this lightly, um, this is what's going to get us to the graph that we actually want, which is y equals cosecant x. So we have a great companion pattern graph. We're ready for step three, where we recip, sketch, and repeat. Um, so we're just going to go through and take the reciprocals of some values along the way. Um, so we'll start at the origin, trying to take the reciprocal of zero, of course, doesn't work. And we talked about we should see an asymptote at x equals zero. So there's an asymptote here on the y-axis. Okay, let's take a couple reciprocals as we start moving to the right. The reciprocal, let's just say, of one half is two. The reciprocal of one is one. Another reciprocal of one half is two. Okay, so that's where we're gonna create the first part of our cosecant curve. At pi, we had a zero for the companion pattern, so we have another vertical asymptote here. Okay, that's great. We said that there should be one at pi when k is one from our asymptotes equation. Um, so you hopefully see how that's a great way to double check yourself as you're graphing. All right, a couple more reciprocals. Let's take the reciprocal of negative one half, that becomes negative two negative one, negative one, another negative one half, two, that just helps us set some points. And then your pattern would repeat, you'd have another vertical asymptote at two pi, um, but I'll wait on that. Let's go ahead and sketch this first cycle. So here's a cosecant curve. The local minimum is where the companion sine graph had a maximum. Okay, and here's the next part of the cosecant curve, it has a local or relative maximum where the sign had its minimum. Now that we have one nice cycle of cosecant x sketched, we can repeat this pattern for as many cycles as we need. So we'll go, we don't have too much space to the right, but we can at least put the vertical asymptote here at two pi. Try plugging in k is two, you'll notice that's where you get the asymptote, x equals two pi. All right, and we can plot this local minimum here to get part of the cosecant curve. Of course, it would continue on. Now we'll work the pattern in the negative direction. So here's a local maximum and the part of the cosecant curve that goes there. Here's a vertical asymptote, the one when k equals negative 1. We get x equals negative pi as an asymptote. Another local minimum and the cosecant curve. I'm sure you can guess, but if you let k equal negative 2, you get that vertical asymptote at negative 2 pi. And then just a little bit more of the curve here. So this is several cycles of y equals cosecant x. Hopefully this helped you better understand the three steps to sketch method for the basic unshifted cosecant graphs. Um, I will post several more worked out examples of a little bit tougher cosecant unshifted graphs. Um, so be sure to check those out. I'll put links to the playlist in the video description. Um, also, go ahead and check out some of the other trig graphing. Um, I'll put links for that as well. Thanks so much for watching.